watching Clarion's very own TV5 News Live. Good evening. It's Thursday, January 24th, 2002. I'm Carrie LaPou. And I'm Susan Onrad. Here's our first our top story. A spokeswoman for the Space Needle in Seattle, Washington, says there appears to be the same number of visitors as usual today. That's despite a report that the city's landmark was a target of terrorism. Bill Prasad has the latest on this story and more in the War on Terrorism. In Seattle, it's called the Space Needle. To a terrorist, it's a target. U.S. forces have found a photo of it, along with drawings of other American landmarks in Al-Qaeda caves in Afghanistan. Officials emphasize they have no specific intelligence about the timing or location of an attack or that one is imminent. Secretary of Defense Donald Rumsfeld says terrorists will get more brazen if they get weapons of mass destruction. These attacks will grow vastly more deadly than those we suffered several months ago. In Pakistan, this man still faces death. A radical Muslim group holding 38-year-old Wall Street reporter Daniel Pearl says in an email that it has extended his execution deadline by 24 hours. Among the group's demands, it wants all Pakistanis being held at the Guantanamo Bay Naval Base released. The demands that the kidnappers have placed are not demands that uh, we, can, uh, we can meet or deal with or get into a negotiation uh, about. In Atlanta, the president talking about education and talking to nations that support terrorism. On Tuesday night, Mr. Bush called Iraq, Iran, and North Korea oh, an axis message. of evil. That if you're one of these nations that uh, develops weapons of mass destruction, and you're likely to team up with a terrorist group, or you're now sponsoring terror, or you don't hold the values we hold dear true to your heart, then you too are on our watch list. Three days of saber rattling from the White House. The Bush administration possibly preparing America for the next front in the war on terrorism. In Washington, I'm Bill Prasad. Clarion County Commissioner Butch Campbell says he appreciates the concerns of the county citizens in regards to the purchase of the former hospital and contends it is still the best option for the county. Clarion Borough Mayor Bill Smathers has been questioning the purchase of the old hospital facility and has also suggested the commissioners consider obtaining more appraisals of the building. The commissioners agreed to offer Dell Ridge Development $880,000 for the building last week. Next Tuesday will be the second meeting of the newly elected Borough Council and as always TV5 will be there to cover it. Mark Despotakis takes a look at some key events from this month's meeting. Mark. Tuesday night marked the second meeting of a newly elected Clarion Borough Council. These pictures show last month's council meeting where, among other things, newly elected Clarion Borough Council member Ron Wilshire was elected council president. But you may be familiar with Wilshire since he was on council in years past and he also served as council president. Well, it's, it's coming back with a bang, I guess. Uh, I look forward to, to working with the council. We have a good council and I, f I feel we can all work together to achieve a lot of things in council. It's, it's a lot of work, but I, I'm acquainted with it. What do you in other council business, newly elected council member Elaine Moore is the new council vice president. One other notable person at the meeting was Earl Zerfoss. Now, Zerfoss isn't a new member of council, but he has been absent from council for the last few months due to a car accident last year. It's good to be back. Uh, uh, I haven't been, it's been since the 16th of October, and uh, outside of going to my uh, daughter and son-in-law's house on Christmas Eve, this is the first time out. Uh, and I, this was my goal, to be here for the reorganizational meeting of council and uh, speak up what I thought needs to be spoken about. So then you're... Borough Council meets next Tuesday at 7 p.m., and you can see the meeting live right here on TV5. In the newsroom, Marcus Atakis, TV5 News. Borough Council is reporting positive progress in labor contract negotiations with public works employees and borough police officers. The borough's contract with the public work employees expires at the end of this year. The police labor contract expired this past December 31, 2001. Council member Rich Er Herman, chair of the council's public safety committee, met with Ken Means, chair of the officers' bargaining unit at work session last week to discuss the contract. Earl Zerfus, 
chair of the Public Works Committee, met with Tom Thompson, shop steward for unionized Public Works employees, and Zerfus believes that the union is ready to negotiate a new contract. Council will act on a request for a new crosswalk on Route 322 located near Nair Hall. The council was notified this week by university officials that the borough will not be held responsible for any project costs. At council's work session this week, there was a talk of, of funding a contribution for the Clarion Fire and Hose Company's capital campaign. The department began the campaign after purchasing an aerial ladder truck for $550,000. Two traffic signal projects are expected to be outbid this spring. This includes a new turn signal for the light at the intersection of 5th Avenue and Main Street and a light at 2nd Avenue. Pennsylvania American Water Company won a land development approval in Clarion Township. The development is meant to build a new water treatment plant near the already existing one in Clarion Township. This new facility will include a filtration plant, three treatment lagoons, and a pump station. This facility will also double the capacity of Pennsylvania American's water system, which serves most of Clarion Township, Clarion Borough, and the northern third of Monroe Township. Kevin Reichard, Planning Commissioner Engineer, said that all approvals are in place for the new water plant project, including the permits from the State Department of Environmental Protection. The eastern part of the state is facing serious drought conditions, while Venango and other surrounding counties will continue to be listed as only drought watch areas. From the State Department of Environmental Protection, David E. Hess said 62 of 67 Pennsylvania counties are either under a watch or a warning as stream flows and groundwater levels continue to decrease. A drought watch calls for a 5% voluntary reduction of non-essential water use, and it's one of the first of three drought stages under the state's drought operating plan. Most inmates being held in the county prison are being held for assault-related charges, according to Jail Warden John Rowley. 132 inmates were incarcerated for assault, including indecent, simple and aggravated assaults, rape, statutory and indecent assault, and kidnapping. 102 inmates were incarcerated for driving under the influence of alcohol. 94 people were jailed for burglary, theft, or received, receiving stolen property offenses, and 62 people were jailed for drug-related offenses. Well, if you liked the first cookbook Clarion's Historical Society put out, then get ready. The Historical Society is putting out yet another recipe book, and they are asking for your help. They are asking you to send in your favorite recipes and old family favorites to be included in the book of Tasty Delights. So start looking through your recipes and send them to Cindy J. Neely, 9448 Route 208, Knox, PA, 16232. Everything from appetizers to desserts and candy will be accepted. Coming up next, a man is arrested for a shooting at a Pittsburgh sandwich shop. We'll have the details coming up. Also, we have the latest on the man who called a 13-year-old captive in his Virginia home. But first, it's your turn. Your turn to let us know what you are thinking. Call or email us here at TV5 and let us know what you are thinking about the show. of the programming was brought to you by the Clarion Bowl Arena, located on Route 322, one mile east of Clarion. Bowl Arena offers rock and bowl every Friday and Saturday night, and a game room with eight pool tables and arcade games. Bowl Arena also offers bumper bowling for kids' birthdays and league play for adults. Call 764-3471. Again, that's 764-3471. On September 11th, America faced terrorist attacks of the worst kind. Innocent lives were lost, and a sad cloud was cast over this great nation. These acts were intended to cause fear among all Americans, including our children. But we cannot let that happen. There are things we can do to help our kids. Talk with them. Listen to them. Tell them they're safe and that they're loved. God bless you, and God bless America. Do you want complete coverage of local, state, national, and international news as it happens? 
Good evening, everyone, and welcome to TV5 News Live. Today, tune in to Clarion's very own TV5 News Live for complete coverage of the Clarion area and our world. TV5 News crews join with crews from the world's news leader, CNN, to provide complete coverage of the day's events. With advanced satellite capabilities, TV5 News can bring you the latest news as it happens. So tune in every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday evenings for Clarion's very own TV5 News Live. Well, boom is continuing in Clarion County, and the boom shows no sign of slowing anytime soon. In the past three years, 300 gas wells were started in the county, according to reports. 108 were started in 1999, 85 in 2000, and 11 more were started this month. Stephen Rhodes, president of the Pennsylvania Oil and Gas Association, attributes that the gas well boom is simply because of the increase in gas prices. Officials say the well should continue for several years. A man has been arrested for a shooting at a Pittsburgh sandwich shop. The attacks last week left three people dead. 32-year-old William Thompson of Pittsburgh was arrested last night and charged with three counts of homicide. The date of his trial has not yet been set. Workers employed at the Beaver Valley Nuclear Power Plant and Shipping Port have rejected a four-year contract offer from the First Energy Corporation. The talk of a new contract will begin immediately after a federal mediator calls on the first energy officials and members from the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers. Officials have not yet set a time for those meetings. The Washington County District Attorney says that one of two men accused in the brutal abduction and slaying of an Ohio medical consultant will be pleading guilty tomorrow. Alex Martos will be testifying against Gregory Mottery who was also charged in the December 1999 slaying of Iris Warrington. Scott Tyree, the Virginia man accused of holding a 13-year-old Pennsylvania girl captive as a sex slave, will be getting an attorney. In Pittsburgh this morning, a federal magistrate ordered Tyree to obtain counsel. You may remember the story of Alicia Kosakevich, who found in Washington, D.C. sunburnt suburb after her parents reported her missing on New Year's Eve. She was found three days later. Testimony continues for the first-degree murder trial of a former Scranton police officer. Michael Surge is accused of killing his own wife at their home in Scott Township last January. The defense claims her killing was in self-defense because Surge's wife came at him with a knife. Coming up next, Kristen Knighton will be here with a look at tonight's weather. But first, here's the break. you've got a much better chance at getting picked for a cool job with great pay if you take algebra, geometry, and calculus. You need to know how math can improve your future. Demand it. Call NACME. We'll tell you. Wardrobe for some TV5 news stock provided by Fashion Bug, located in the Clarion Mall. Whether you're looking for junior trendy or fashion for women, they have it all with many different styles. Fashion Bug also offers a wide selection of accessories. Fashion Bug is located in the Clarion Mall, just off of Exit 62 of Interstate 80. Open Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. till 9 p.m. and Sunday from noon to 5.
This portion of programming is sponsored by Reese Brothers, located in Drake Square Building in Oil City. Reese Brothers offers a competitive hourly wage, plus daily bonuses, flexible scheduling, company-sponsored health benefits, and paid professional training. Call today at 1-800-365-3500, extension 684, or 677-9236 for your personal interview or stop by and visit the Drake Square Building. Reese Brothers, where integrity and technology connect. Hi everybody, I'm Brandy. How would you like to give hope to millions of the world's children? UNICEF, the United Nations Children's Fund, is saving lives in over 140 countries by providing kids with medicine, clean water, nutrition, and education. With your help, UNICEF can make a huge difference in our world. For more information, call 1-800-FOR-KIDS. Thank you. Well, it was definitely another dreary day out today. Kristen, is the weather going to get any better? Well, it doesn't look so good. Let's take a look at the satellite map and see what the weekend and the early next week will bring us. The entire northeastern part of the United States is experiencing cloud cover. These clouds will bring rain until tomorrow afternoon. This evening, you can expect rain mixing with snow with a chance of freezing rain by morning. The green area, which represents the rain, being brought by the low pressure system. Behind the green area stands the pink, which shows the freezing rain. The temperature will slowly drop out throughout the night. Tomorrow is another rainy day. It will look much like today. The front map for tomorrow indicates rain for all of Pennsylvania. In Clarion, temperatures will reach almost 50 again. Temperatures will drop significantly tomorrow evening and snow showers may occur around midnight. Tomorrow, it's mixed rain and snow, high of 49 and low of 22. Saturday is partly cloudy, a high of 30 and a low of 18. Sunday is flurries, high of 30 and low of 21. Monday is flurries, again, high of 30 and low of 16. Tuesday is partly cloudy, high of 22 and low of 19. For those of you who are traveling tomorrow, please take caution. The roads may be slippery. Thank you, Kristen. Um, that's really good advice. Um, more award nominations to report tonight. Martis Macri is here with the night's entertainment news. On Tuesday, the Screen Actors Guild announced the nominees for its eighth annual SAG Awards. These awards are given to television and movie actors to honor outstanding performances. By the movies A Beautiful Mind and In the Bedroom each got three nominations. In television, The West Wing and The Sopranos each got four nominations. The nominee for Outstanding Grammar, Performance by a Cast in a Theatrical Motion Picture Sean are Hayes, A Beautiful Lynn Mind, Ray. Moulin Rouge, Gadsford Park, Frazier. In the Bedroom, and Ray The Lord Romano. of the Rings. Everybody loves you can Ray. see the award ceremony on Sunday, March 10th at 8 o'clock on TNT. The 1996 <laughs> Nobel Prize nominee, model, businesswoman, and humanitarian Heather Mills is in the news again. With her fiancé Paul McCartney by her side, she relaunched her modeling career as a spokeswoman for INC International to raise funds for a charity. In return, INC is going to contribute 1% of their February sales to Adopt a Minefield, the United Nations program committed to resolve the worldwide landmine crisis. With Entertainment Beat, I'm Martise McCree. A few months ago, folks outside Afghanistan had never heard of Hamad Rashah. Now the interim Afghan leader is being hailed as a paragon of style. In the wake of his whirlwind visit to New York, Janine Moose measures the fashion fallout. Someone once said you can't be both fashionable and first rate. <laughs> Tell that to admirers of Hamid Karza. Like what he had on last night was absolutely gorgeous. May we ask you to pose with... Uh... Yes. He has a very casual swagger, shall we say. <laughs> Hello to America. I think he's quite chic. The chicest man on the planet is what Tom Ford, creative director of Gucci, called Karzai. The New York Post dubbed the look Kabul chic. Even the New York Times isn't immune. In flash of an Afghan cape, a star of diplomacy is born. Remember Eddie Murphy in Coming to America? Remember, Simi, no one here can know I am royalty. You must appear to be no different than the average man. 
while Carr's eye sticks out in a sea of dark suits. It's regal, for sure. Descended from a noble Pashtun tribe, Carr's eye speaks seven languages. I've got a little time, one question. We weren't able to ask the question a viewer asked us. Please explain the green coat robe he wore when he was a knee. He had it around his shoulders instead of having his arms in the sleeves. Actually, his sleeves are so long they touch the floor and he sits. <clears throat> Only rarely does Karzai put his arms in them. We asked the editor-in-chief of Glamour magazine to give us her impressions of the Afghan leader. You know, everybody obviously has to keep in mind that being chic is not what this man is about, and better not to focus on the cape and to focus on the message. Absolutely. But we're going to look at the cape a little. <laughs> cape looks great. No, Karzai wears it over a western jacket and a shirt with a Nehru-esque collar. Glamour's editor thinks Karzai's style sends a message. I am one of you. I can bridge the gap between Afghan culture and the Western world. He reminds me a lot of Ben Kingsley. He has a definite elegance, a certain style. Only Ben Kingsley isn't always wearing that hat. The same hat we found at JJ Hat Center in New York. Now and on you, it's a little bit big. Oh, but come on, I look all right. Yep. When Karzai isn't wearing it, he's carrying it. At the hat store, it has a name. This is called a diplomat or an ambassador. Because that's who used to wear it. Lately, sales have jumped. This hat became, quote unquote, the style hat. And a lot of hats because will do of that. this guy? Yeah. It's made out of Persian lamb skin, and yes, the lamb is killed. How much is this hat? $250. Wow. Yep, $250. With all the troubles his country faces, Hamid Karzai will need to have some tricks up his ever so long sleeve. My, everybody, let's go. Jeannie Mo, CNN, New York. April Johnson will be here with tonight's sports. That's coming up next on TV5 News. Made possible through a grant by Fox's Pizza Den. Fox's Pizza Den is located on Old Route 66 in Clarion and offers all-day delivery. Phone 226-5555. That's 226-5555. Fox's Pizza Den is open seven days a week for your convenience. Phone 226-5555. local, state, national, and international news as it happens. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to TV5 News Live. Today, tune in to Clarion's very own TV5 News Live for complete coverage of the Clarion area and our world. TV5 News crews join with crews from the world's news leader, CNN, to provide complete coverage of the day's events. With advanced satellite capability, TV5 News can bring you the latest news as it happens. So tune in every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday evening for Clarion's very own TV5 News Live. On September 11th, America faced terrorist attacks of the worst kind. Innocent lives were lost, and a sad cloud was cast over this great nation. These acts were intended to cause fear among all Americans, including our children. But we cannot let that happen. There are things we can do to help our kids. Talk with them. Listen to them. Tell them they're safe and that they're loved. God bless you, and God bless America. Welcome back to TV5 News. April, I'm still kind of bitter about the Steelers losing on Sunday. I'm a big Pittsburgh fan, but um, what do you have for us concerning the Super Bowl? Well, um, with the Super Bowl right around the corner, the big question on the minds of all football fans has finally been answered. Bill Belichick, the coach of the New England Patriots, has decided to start quarterback Tom Brady instead of three-time Pro Bowl player Drew Bledsoe. After watching the practice tapes from Wednesday, Coach Belichick was convinced that Brady is ready to start against the St. Louis Rams. Although Bledsoe led the Patriots to a victory over the Steelers last Sunday, Belichick remains confident on the ability of his second-year pro, Tom Brady. In basketball news, a remarkable performance last night by Allen Iverson brought the Philadelphia 76ers to a 96-91 win over the Milwaukee Timberwolves. Iverson scored an amazing 38 points, and teammate Derek Coleman 
helped out with 18 points and 9 rebounds. Winning 11 out of the 15 games that they have played this month, the Sixers are back on track in the playoff race. In tennis, Anna Kornikova defeated Elena Dementiva today, advancing her to the quarterfinals of the Ture Pan Pacific Tennis Tournament. Kornikova struggled through the first three games of the second set, but made a great compact to win the second tiebreaker 7-5. Despite a stress fracture in her left foot that kept her off the court for eight months, Anna Kornikova is obviously showing a lot of strength and improvement. Thanks, April. That's all for the news tonight. Join us next Tuesday at 7 p.m. for Clarion Borough Council coverage, followed by a TV5 News update with Kelly Gesno. For everyone here at TV5 News, I'm Susan Honorad. And I'm Carrie LaPoo. Have a good weekend.